While most people do not associate the word beauty with buses, there certainly have been buses that were beautiful. Probably one of the most attractive and stylish double-decker buses ever created was the Manchester Mancunian. With its elongated and well-proportioned picture windows and deep front windscreen, it was groundbreaking for its day. This is the story of the Manchester Mancunian, one of the most beautiful city transport buses ever created. Hi, this is Jeffrey, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the Manchester Mancunian, which was probably one of the most beautiful double-decker buses ever designed. Now, I know that when it comes to design or aesthetics, what one person believes is beautiful, another person may not agree, and I understand that. However, in all of my research about the Manchester Mancunian, I found that a lot of people do agree that this was a very beautiful bus. Now, this did not happen in a vacuum. It did not happen by itself. It happened because the Manchester City Transport System was run by a very innovative manager at that time who really understood the power of design and marketing. And so he was able to create this really fabulous bus. So let's get started in learning more about this really beautiful bus, the Manchester Mancunian. The creation of the Manchester Mancunian represented the pinnacle of not only double-decker bus design of the late 1960s, but also showed how an ambitious, even enlightened management team can create a brand new image for a city transport system. Manchester City Transport's Mancunian concept was a significant development in double-deck bus styling. Commissioned by the dynamic and forward-thinking general manager, Ralph Bennett, from a concept produced by Manchester City Transport's in-house industrial designer, Ken Mortimer, it demonstrated Manchester's commitment to making the most of new laws to allow one-person operated double-deckers and was the first double-decker bus designed to be operated in such a manner. Unlike his more traditional predecessor, Bennett understood the power of brash marketing and wanted the new buses to make a bold statement. In addition to separate entrance and exit doors and coin-operated fare collection equipment, they had a profound and possibly a slightly revolutionary new look with an almost floor-to-ceiling front windscreen, intentionally boxy styling, large picture windows, and translucent roof panels. They also had a striking new paint scheme, which had already appeared on a batch of Leyland Panthers introduced when it looked like the future for large-scale one-person operation was to utilize large single-deckers. The first order of Mancunians was placed in 1965 and was for 96 buses built to a 30-foot length. The bodywork was ordered from Park Royal, with 48 built on the Leyland Atlantean chassis, with fleet numbers 1001 to 1048, and 48 on the Daimler fleet line, with fleet numbers 2001 to 2048. Both had significant modifications, such as an extended rear overhang to accommodate back-to-back -back transverse seating over the rear wheel arches, which were to become standard on later models, most notably the AN68 version of the Atlantean. They began service in Manchester in April of 1968, after much fanfare and publicity. The Mancunian became its standard type of bus for the next four years, although most of the 472 built were delivered to Selneck. After the first 96 buses, the rest of the fleet were built to a longer 33 feet or 10 meter length, giving some vehicles a 100 passenger capacity and later deliveries arrived in Selnek Orange. The Mancunian fleet had four different bodybuilders. Park Royal built the bodies on a total of 354 of them. Metro Camel Wayman built 60, row 34, and East Lanx 24, of which 12 had a single door layout. The row-bodied fleet lines in the 1970 Park Royal Atlanteans were originally going to be bodied by East Lancashire, 
but a fire at their factory in Blackburn necessitated their transfer. The 20 ordered by Salford had that undertaking's single-line front destination layout with parallel ultimate destination and route number boxes. The other 452 had the three-piece Manchester layout, which also was the PTE's standard specification. These buses, a mix of Manchester and Salford ideas, were later dubbed Salcunians by enthusiasts. A total of 293 Mancunians rode on Fleetline chassis and 179 on the Atlantean chassis. The last Mancunian ran in service in December of 1984 and few saw further service with other operators. Some were even put beyond use to prevent competitors getting their hands on them just prior to deregulation. Interestingly enough, most probably the main legacy of the Mancunian was a very similar body style based closely on the Mancunian design for eight Leyland Atlantean Park Royal AN68 buses that were ordered by the New York City Transit Authority and delivered in 1976. They were for use in Manhattan primarily on Fifth Avenue. The major difference was that the front windshield was not as deep as its Manchester cousins. This was a test to determine the viability of bringing back double-decker buses to New York as the last yellow coach-built double-deckers ran on Fifth Avenue in 1953. The test was not all that successful, and by 1980, they were out of service and were later sold to Gray Line of San Francisco for touring purposes. There is currently three Mancunians in fully restored condition. Number 1001, which was the very first Mancunian, is preserved at the Manchester Museum of Transport. It is a Leyland Atlantean with Park Royal bodywork. It is in Manchester City Transport's red and ivory paint. Number 2130 is a 1970 Daimler Fleet Line, new to Selneck with Park Royal bodywork and has been returned to an early version of the PTE's orange and white livery. The Selneck Preservation Society, which acquired 2130 in 1995, has more Mancunians awaiting restoration, but 2130 is one of only three currently restored and able to be shown in public. Number 2236 is a 1971 Daimler Fleet Line, also with Park Royal bodywork, and is in post-1974 Greater Manchester Transport Darker Orange and White. It is part of the Telford Bus Group collection. We can only hope that more of these beautiful Mancunians will be restored in the future. So when you look at the Mancunian, there's something about the proportions that makes it such a great bus to look at. The size of the side windows, the height of the front windshield, it all just works together so well. And it's just such a pleasing bus to look at. Now, when I look at the interior, it seems a bit spartan to me. It looks like they may not have put that many design innovations into the interior as they did to the proportions of the bus. Maybe I'm wrong about that, I don't know. Uh, so I'm just basing this on the pictures I've seen. So if you have ridden on the Mancunian, uh, you know, let me know if that's true or not. Now, when I was a little kid, I did ride on the New York Mancunians at least a couple of times. And it was a really great novelty. It was something very different in a sea of thousands of GM and flexible new look buses. So it was something really, really different at the time. The problem was that it was a very small, non-standard fleet of only eight buses. Uh, it was of foreign origin. And there was also an issue where some of the, of the mechanics in New York refused to work on those buses. And so I remember there was an article in the newspaper uh, that said that the New York City Transit Authority had to fly in a mechanic from London to fix the buses. So... That's the whole story behind that. And unfortunately, uh, they did not order any more because it would have been a fun thing to have. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look at the Manchester Mancunian, one of the most beautiful buses ever designed, in my opinion. And always, thank you so much for watching. 
and have a great day. Bye.